morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to welcome participants from almost 20 countries to today's ITP Academy webinar, taking place in cooperation with IPKey International live from Munich. Indeed, we have a very interesting topic today. We will hear about the main travel trends of the year 2013 and a forecast for the year 2014. For this, we have for you today a very experienced speaker, Mr. Rolf Freitag, President and Founder of IPK International. He has successfully completed about 1,000 tourism-related market research and marketing projects in more than 50 countries worldwide. So he's definitely our expert today. And the findings presented in today's ITP Academy webinar are also being published in the World Travel Trends Report, which will be online by today for the eighth time and has been prepared by IPK International on behalf of ITP. Look for this at itp-berlin.com uh, or itpconvention.com. Now, Mr. Freitag, we are happy to have you here. Hello, my friends from uh, Munich. Uh, um, uh, I'm the president of IPK International, and we are specialized in tourism research since uh, more than 40 years. Uh, today, I want to speak about world travel uh, trends in, in 2013 and also about what lies ahead, especially what will come next year, and also short, long, longer term outlook. So, let's start the presentation. <clears throat> My information today is based on representative opinion polling in 61 countries of origin, covering 90% uh, of world outbound travel demand, and uh, results of our 21st World Travel Monitor Forum in Pisa, sponsored by ITB Berlin. Anyhow, if you are interested to participate at this uh, meeting uh, next year, it will be on 28th and 29th October in Pisa again. I think just some short words about IPK International. We have a global tourism service program. We realize the World Travel Monitor. You will hear much more about it later. Uh, we make uh, tourism marketing research, tourism master planning, including uh, resort uh, development and concept design, and investment development for this uh, resort. Uh, 2013, uh, again, uh, we had many uh, destinations uh, under distress, and you know, viol uh, violence and political unrest remained in the headlines. Travelers uh, uh, keeping, keeping travelers away, sometimes in droves. Egypt is still in distress, return to re tourism business as usual awaits another day. Syria catastrophe, the tourism sector has collapsed, and we all ask when will peace make an end to this nightmare. Terrible. Also, Mexico is still in distress, uh, yet business was conducted. And Greece has big problems, but uh, happy enough, uh, to, uh, inbound travel to Greece uh, was coming back in 2013 helping a lot to the national economy. But uh, we had also a new world record, uh, five hours to get through customs. This has happened uh, this year in Miami, in, in JFK, John F. Kennedy, uh, and uh, Chicago Air, uh, airports. Uh, and uh, the question uh, from all of us is, is safety uh, paranoia the new normal? To my mind, it's incredible that this can happen. And uh, the, the big superstars like USA, Japan, Canada, France, UK, Germany, and so on are in trouble. Uh, they have lost a lot of credibility because of uh, uh, the high uh, uh, government debts. They are still markets with a very high income, or with the highest income in the world. Uh, 
but uh, the debts are, for, for, in, at least in some of these countries, higher than any economists would uh, uh, allow. So, what is the result? The old world, which is the USA, Europe, and Japan, has got into big trouble. But some emerging countries have already arrived. You know them. Others are on a good way. And new destinations have, uh, have bypassed some of the most uh, famous old ones. Just to give you an example, global stars have become starlets. For all of us, Las Vegas is a global gambler's paradise. But rumors say that uh, gambling newcomer Macau, uh, Ternova, is the sixth fold of Las Vegas. This uh, has not been realized, at least by the Western world, for a while. Uh, upward mobility, positive trends in contrast to the old world we see in, in the new world, where salaries have doubled uh, over the last, last uh, eight years. We have it in Latin America, mainly Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru, altogether 405 million inhabitants but also in Europe, in the eastern part of Europe, in Poland, Russia, Turkey, and, uh, of course, in Asia. Altogether, this new world uh, has, uh, has more than 3.5 billion inhabitants, meaning uh, more than half of the world's population. And these are up to markets, actually. They're on a good way. So the actual situation is that uh, one-third of humanity is traveling, but we should also see here on the map the blue uh, countries uh, where uh, uh, a, large, a huge part of the population is, uh, can still not yet travel. <clears throat> However, we think that, uh, that uh, travel will become a world lifestyle very soon. It's meaning uh, nearly for everybody in the world. The new world middle class uh, will double by 2030. Researchers uh, all agree to this. And this will result in uh, one and a half billion persons more belonging to this middle class, which is meaning for us they can also travel. Can you Im imagine the impact on global tourism within the next uh, 15 years? we are quite sure that we will have an excellent uh, uh, travel market. Also, the economy might be not always stable. There's a big growth potential still. So what does this mean uh, for the world tourism in 2013 and 2014? Let's have a look at our latest data. Just a short uh, explanation about the method. Uh, my database is the world travel monitor. Uh, produced by IPK International si since 1988, and it's a steadily growing world travel survey. I have said you 61 countries where we run these representative, uh, population representative uh, interviews with consumers uh, 15 years and older. Uh, we ask also not only the consumer answering the interview, but we ask also about uh, the, the whole entire travel household, including uh, company children. This allows us to quantify uh, the entire world market. Um, we try to cover the travel behavior of all types of travel, if it's at least one night or more abroad, meaning outside their own country. And it doesn't matter which type of travel, if it was business travel, visit of friends and relatives, uh, or a holiday. And we, we, reject, uh, we measure all destinations worldwide. So we can give information for the destinations uh, as for the markets of origin. Uh, so you see here, in Europe, uh, 33 countries are covered, 99% market coverage. An American travel monitor, 14 countries, 90-70% of the travel market in, in the Americas is covered, and in Asia now 85%. And this year will be added uh, Iran, uh, uh, so the market coverage will go up to 87%. So we have travel and data for the last 26 years, and now uh, 
<clears throat> the conclusion is that we uh, try to make a value creation in three steps. 61 national opinion research institutes are regularly delivering representative travel behavior data to our data center in Luzern in Switzerland. Our data center from transforms these data into travel information, and our research team in Munich transforms this information into useful tourism knowledge on demand for our clients. So let's come to the data. Uh, my data today are based on the survey results from January to August 2013, uh, but as we know by experience over the years, the results presented here are to 1%, more or less 1% uh, plus minus uh, the, the final results for the entire year. <clears throat> so, first point is the world outbound trip performance, meaning uh, the trips uh, realized by the world population uh, to any destination outside their own country. And as you can see in the graph, uh, there, there is a steady growth. <clears throat> now we are reaching uh, 947 million trips. And you uh, can see uh, that in, in most years, uh, the growth rate uh, for travel was higher than the world uh, trade growth. For example, this year we will have four, maybe uh, even 5% uh, growth at the end of the year, and world trade will just uh, grow by 2.5%. Uh, it's also interesting to see that we, we see in the world uh, every year 40 to 50 million more outbound trips. Top six global outbound travel markets. Outbound is meaning from where the travelers are coming. Uh, the greatest number comes from Germany, rank two is China, rank three is USA, rank four UK, five France, six Canada, and I should add uh, rank seven is Russia, meanwhile, one of the booming uh, lions, and probably taking over next year uh, position six. Uh, all time outbound high. Uh, came from Asia or Oceania, uh, plus 8%. We had in Asia a weak spring uh, where there were small, slight signs of a crisis, but uh, very fast, uh, already in May, uh, I think business came back, and, and meanwhile we are plus 8%. Maybe we might end with plus 9%. But it's meaning very, very strong uh, markets. All-time also, all -time high also from Africa and Middle East, plus 7%, with an ongoing stable growth. The volumes are still uh, much smaller than on the other continents, but the growth is impressioning and stable uh, over many years now. Uh, by the way, we should know also that there is a demographic uh, dynamic in, in, in Africa, and in 2022 or 23. Uh, Africa will uh, pass uh, the population of China. There will be more Africans than, China, uh, than Chinese. Uh, All-time outbound travel from Latin America, plus 6%. It was uh, mainly due to the strong Brazilian outbound market, but also other markets uh, developed uh, quite well. North America was less dynamic, but nevertheless uh, plus 3%. But in North America, uh, we must differentiate. Um, most growth came from Canada, Canadian outbound travel, not only to US, but to the world. Very, very strong outbound market. Uh, USA, uh, we actually see just at plus 1% more travel. Also, Europe, Europe uh, recession or not, uh, was positive in 2013. Uh, we will land around 2.5% more outbound trips from European, despite a slight decrease of the GDP. But we always uh, concentrate on the crisis countries. But in reality, 70% uh, of the countries show increasing buying power over the last years. So not all is crisis in Europe. So the top six international destinations of worldwide travelers, 
Rank 1, USA. Rank 2, Spain. Rank 3, China. Rank 4, Germany. 5, France. 6, Italy. So which age groups uh, drive the market? As we can see here, it's uh, the, the younger population driving the market, but also the, the middle population. But most dynamic are younger travelers from emerging markets. <clears throat> they are also called the Generation Y. They are driving the market. This uh, travel of young people or young travel has, was seen uh, for a long time as, as a small, low spending segment. But uh, what we can see is a shift from backpackers, you, you know these backpackers traveling around, to flashbackers. Uh, flashbackers are high tech savvy and socially connected young travelers using the internet uh, and so on. The Generation Y flashbackers, as I might call them, has more money to spend on travel is traveling more often, that's meaning not only one trip per year, but also several trips per year, and also to more distant destinations. Why do these young people travel abroad? For holidays, 45%, let's say more or less half. For educational reasons, mainly uh, learning uh, languages, uh, quite often it's learning English, 38%. For some practical work experience, I want to know how, uh, how they do my job in the United States or in Australia. And 2% and travel for volunteer jobs uh, to help uh, in, in emerging countries with their special know-how. <clears throat> when it comes to the overnight performance, we see also dynamics. It's a little bit less dynamic than uh, the number of trips uh, because uh, people tend to travel uh, shorter time. But every year we have a growth of more than 200 million uh, nights, international nights, which, uh, with a huge uh, business volume behind and also a huge impact on, uh, on jobs. Uh, very interesting is here to see the travel duration. Uh, the longest uh, travels, uh, travelers are coming from Latin America, spending an average of 11 days, but it's meaning either uh, they spend one week or two weeks abroad or even longer. Uh, same counts for Eastern Europe. In, while Western Europe and North America is a mix, uh, it's not uh, meaning that the people don't make long trips but it's meaning they make also a uh, hell of a lot of uh, short stays, up to five per year, and so the average figure is, uh, is only seven, seven and a half uh, nights. And the most dynamic market, Asia, is used to travel to make short trips. Actually, it is about one week, not longer. So all this has an impact that the total overnight volume is actually growing not as fast as the number of trips. <clears throat> so one of the trend questions this year is, is sleep cheap the next mega trend? If you're a hotelier, you might not like this uh, chart, uh, but uh, we, we can see that there's something going on. The international hospitality market is increasingly split into the classical top-end market, let's say four- and five-star hotels, including six-, seven-star hotels, and an increasing bottom-end market. Let's see the figures. What is driving overnight growth? Uh, we see in, in the upper field, uh, you see the segment hotel. 60% of overnight states in the world are spent in hotels but 40% are spent in other types of accommodation, like holiday home, visit of friends and relatives, and so on, you have camping, and so on. So when it comes to the growth over the last uh, four periods, we can see uh, the bottom end was growing much faster than uh, the other um, hospitality segments. 
bottom end is meeting, meaning budget hotels, let's say low cost hotels also, and all other kinds of accommodation, private uh, stays and so on, plus 31% over the last uh, four periods from 2009 to 2013. Uh, also, uh, f four and five star segment was doing uh, well, uh, plus 19 percent. And uh, in, in the middle class hotels, two three stars uh, were much less dynamic. We could also say they were losing market shares. Bottom end was uh, gaining market shares, uh, top end too, and then and its uh, middle uh, segment was losing market share. That's also what we call the sandwich uh, uh, impact or effect. The bottom end market, which is so dynamic, is driven by cheap, <coughs> uh, cheap budget flights and, and low cost flights, more transparency via international and social media, Emerging low-cost accommodation suppliers, look here, free hospitality networks like couch surfing, or cheap private accommodations like Airbnb with already 10 million bookings. And these are products, of course, of the uh, Internet. The Internet makes it possible for everybody to reach everybody in the world, not just uh, the big uh, suppliers or intermediaries. So we have uh, hospitality exchange networks today, couch serving I've mentioned, stay for free, be welcome, and so on. We have uh, vacation and short-term rental websites, I've mentioned air, PNB, home away, tripping, sabbatical homes, flip key, and so on and uh, an increasing number of hostel chains, uh, but hostels with much better uh, supply than in the past. So, uh, and these are uh, the real boomers uh, eating uh, the business cake, actually. When it comes to global outbound turnover performance, uh, following our measurement, uh, the world is spending uh, about one point. 571 billion US dollar per year, per year for international travel. And growth, growth was uh, plus 28% over the last four years. Every year, turnover is green, increasing by about 70 billion US dollar. More turnover. So you can see the travel and tourism is a big business and it's worthwhile to be uh, innovative and creative creative uh, to get a part of this cake. Uh, so where did this outbound spending of 1.5 uh, billion uh, go? 70% of uh, international travel spending are received in the destination countries. 28% of international travel spending remains in the markets of origin, or within international passenger transportation companies. We suppose that due to the online booking, the destination share might increase because uh, the, there will be less intermediaries uh, probably. So who is driving the international travel spending growth? We have plus 50% uh, Asian outbound travel spending over the last four years, plus 41% South American outbound uh, spending, 29% North American outbound spending, and 15% European outbound spending. So Asia and South America are the real uh, drivers of this big boom. Another question is why do people travel abroad? <clears throat> the green segment is meaning 65% uh, of all outbound trips are holiday, for holiday reasons. 27% the blue is business and 8% is for private reasons VFR. 
So let's count together VFR and holidays. We have 73% uh, leisure travel and 27% business. Most dynamic over the last periods were, were holidays gaining market share. Uh, below average growth was for business travel and VFR. We come to the reasons <clears throat> later. So the biggest holiday market segment is still sun and beach holiday. 28% of all holy outbound holidays spent in the world are for sun and beach motivation and destination. Over the last four years, it was positive plus 12%. But as the general market was, the holiday market was increasing much faster, the share of Sun and Beach is decreasing. Let's say trend is positive, but others are doing even better. <clears throat> Very interesting is by continents the difference in Sun and Beach. Market share, Eastern Europe is still very much uh, sun and beach oriented with nearly 40% of all outbound holidays. Also, Western Europe and Latin America are sun and beach minded, but not so much in North America and nearly not at all so far in Asia. In Asia, less than 15% of outbound holidays are spent for sun and beach. The reason why is we have other segments uh, uh, which seem to be quite uh, attractive. Above all, uh, the second biggest segment, which is tour or round trip holiday. 23% of all outbound holidays are for uh, a tour. Growth rate was above average, share is increasing. Why does uh, this market grow so fast? Because uh, the, the boomer market, Asia, is tour and round trip oriented uh, holiday market. 38% of Asian outbound holidays so far were for, for tour, which is meaning Asians uh, just starting to travel around the globe first start and uh, want to learn about uh, the world. So they visit many, many places and sometimes even more country when, when days they are on travel, let's say nine countries in, in, in six days. Also Eastern Europe uh, still, uh, let's say the, the emerging, the new markets uh, are still round trip oriented, whilst in, in North America and, and Western Europe the share is much smaller. So tours are the second biggest holiday segment. And then we have uh, the, the, boo the real boomer, which is city holiday market. So far, 20%. By the way, I'm seeing this picture. It's in, in, in Munich. It's uh, our marketplace in Munich. And tourists, you can imagine where tourists are coming from. So uh, over the last four years, uh, we have nearly 50% uh, increase in city holidays. And uh, the share is increasing very fast. On the, so you see uh, city holidays mainly from Asia and Latin America. So summarizing uh, what is driving the global holiday market, we can see the real boomers and drivers of uh, international holiday travel where city holidays above all and tour holidays from emerging markets. And here I should say mainly from uh, Asia and South America. But also Sun and Beach holiday was doing fine, uh, especially also due to growth coming from uh, new markets in Eastern Europe. On the other side, country holiday, countryside holidays, which is meaning relax on the countryside, including um, summer mountain holidays, was negative and uh, minus 10% uh, countryside holidays, which is meaning also big lose in market shares. <clears throat> and this is mainly a European crisis impact, because in Europe, this countryside holiday and summer holidays in the mountains 
is quite a popular form of travel. So we have a clear picture of the boomers and uh, those uh, losing market share. There are, of course, also many other types of holidays, but they are much smaller than this, this four segments. So what are the, if seeing the world and outbound travel, uh, what uh, are the main benefits and activities uh, of people, what they are looking for on a, on a successful holiday? Above all, number one motivation is visiting sites, sightseeing, learning about the world. Number two is really relaxing, hanging loose, sleeping well. Mainly people uh, stress the daily life, uh, so uh, on holiday uh, they want to forget everything. Third uh, most popular activity is enjoying meals and drinks. All these are segments where, uh, which uh, account for 60 to 70 percent of all outbound holiday makers. So they are really a basic need, and uh, if you're a tour operator, you should check uh, that you have the right uh, supply. Then comes swimming and sunbathing. It's mainly for people coming from the northern part of our globe, looking for warm weather and uh, sunshine. Fifth most important is discovering landscape and discovering nature. A segment with increasing importance, <clears throat> mainly also due to the people coming from big cities. Let's also see the, from the big cities in Asia, uh, where uh, nature is uh, usually quite far away from uh, towns. And uh, the sixth one uh, being important is shopping. Also, this counts especially for emerging markets. Other motivations are much less important. Uh, we, we are measuring them, uh, but they are much smaller segments. I show you just uh, the most important, let's say, the basic needs of a, of a holiday maker. So when it comes to business travel, um, the business travel is a big segment, well spending. But what we can see over the last years is uh, usually we had only traditional business trips, uh, let's say going for selling, going for buying, uh, <clears throat> visiting uh, branches of the company and so on. And, uh, but now uh, MICE travel, which is meaning a meeting market, incentive market, conventions and event, events, uh, has taken over the lead. 54% of all international business travel is now for MICE motivations. And you can see also why. Let's have a look at the trend. The biggest growth uh, over the last four years we have seen in the incentive market. Also, convention business was doing quite well, and conference and congress. And these are the <coughs> convention, conference, congress, exhibition trade fairs. This is the information market you go for know-how uh, tanking abroad. Uh, exhibition trade fair uh, growth was weaker than the other segments, and one of the main reasons is the economic crisis in many countries of the world. So there was a small recession in this sector. And traditional business travel, buying, selling, meeting clients, uh, Branch, uh, <clears throat> branch offices from our company is decreasing. Two reasons uh, uh, we can see here. One is, of course, what we are doing today. It is the Internet. So try to replace a uh, trip uh, by, uh, by going on Internet or in a Skype conference and so on, video conference. And uh, the other reason is that cost saving is king in the world. And so uh, the companies today look much more on travel spending and uh, reduce travel wherever it is possible. So the outlook to our mind is that this process still will go on and uh, know-how tanking will be more important than ever before. And what is positive if you are in the travel business is that uh, incentive, convention, conference, congress, exhibitions, trade fair, 
This is what we call promotable business travel. It is meaning you can organize an event, a convention, a conference, a trade fair, and you make marketing and the people will come. But you have not much influence on the traditional uh, business travel, uh, depending much more on, on, on the actual state of the economy. So when it comes to transportation, we have an ongoing increase uh, of uh, air plane share, air transportation, now 57% in uh, worldwide. By the way, in USA it is 80%, but in Europe it's still below 50%, but also going up. So the trend is really air. Car is uh, the second most uh, important uh, transportation mean, but with a decreasing share. Same counts for coach and train. So let's come <clears throat> to the choice of uh, booking channels. What we can see is uh, in our monitoring, and we have followed the internet uh, penetration in the travel business since uh, its early, uh, very early years, where less than a half percent was using internet. <clears throat> and we can see now in 65% of all uh, travel bookings, Internet was uh, involved. This must not mean that everybody, uh, everything has been bought uh, via Internet, but uh, 60, uh, for 65% of the trips, at least something was booked on the Internet. And in 2013, uh, we have a 10% increase in this segment which is meaning uh, the, the Internet is still gaining market share. Uh, but we have also 24% travel agency bookings worldwide, and also this development was positive, plus 4%. Still losing market share, but the market for travel agencies in absolute terms is still increasing. And then you all know the other, direct booking with hotel, with the transportation carrier, and so on. So, how will be the future for booking channels? And how will be the future of travel intermediaries? Uh, what we have seen over all these, uh, in studies all these markets, 61 markets, uh, uh, online booking seems to be close to saturation. Not 100% one day will be uh, online. We think around 70% uh, booking share uh, is the upper limit, more or less around this. In these markets, the downward trend for travel agency bookings seem to have stopped around 20% booking share, and we uh, from IPK believe that even a slight increase is possible uh, if you can uh, manage uh, to develop uh, new uh, attractions for travel agencies to make it more uh, very positive a personal experience, maybe even a leisure experience, and so on. Emerging markets with a high uh, share of first-time travelers, anyhow, still need the support of travel agencies. <clears throat> so it's, it's either in, in Asia or in, 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 especially in Latin America, travel agency is still the king. So another question is uh, if the travel industry uh, should get uh, mobile. Uh, when you read uh, the international media, you might believe uh, that every, uh, everything is now uh, going mobile and uh, bookings, uh, you must uh, offer mobile booking and you make the big business. But uh, as we can see in our monitoring system is that consumers mostly use smartphones and tablets for travel information purposes. You look for information. Consumers have not yet started making bookings to any great extent. And the few mobile bookings are done quickly and spontaneously, usually 70% were decided within 24 hours. So the mobile is a fast uh, booking uh, assistant and not, uh, not yet at all a general uh, uh, market leader. 
you can see in the figures here uh, that mobile bookings are still low. The highest uh, share we have measured in China. By the way, this counts also for other internet usage. China is really uh, internet oriented. And Japan, uh, USA, or Europe are more or less on the same uh, level, plus uh, with a 2% market share. And no uh, other area in the world has more than 1%, meaning Latin America and so on. <clears throat> but social media has become an integral part of global travel planning. You can see here the figures for outbound travel 2013, social media use. China, 95% of Chinese outbound travelers go on internet and look for, uh, for, uh, for some information. Okay. Brazil, 84%, USA, uh, Europe uh, in the 60s, and Japan a little bit less. So you must, uh, if you are uh, in, in the marketing field, you must take care of this event, how to use uh, the social media in the right way. Uh, here we have, for example, the visionary look of uh, the future of social media, a statement by Kurt Simon Harlinghausen, who has made his presentation at our latest PISA meeting, uh, end of October this year. He says, in, in the future, content will rule the digital world. So content of the, your message will be king. It's also meaning blah, 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 blah. It's better uh, to be silent than uh, just to make blah, blah, blah on, on uh, social media. But targeted, context-related, real-time, fast content will become King Kong. So think about to whom you want to speak, uh, it must be related to the travel decision, and it should be up to date, not uh, something done already five years ago the same way. So social push marketing uh, via Facebook and Twitter will become more common than pull marketing via Google, which is meaning, in other words, uh, Google, you go on Google and, and you look for but in Facebook and Twitter, you get uh, aggressively, you, you place uh, the messages. So, uh, conclusion, global outbound performers uh, over the last uh, four periods, from 2009 to 2013, <clears throat> Boomer were city holidays, above all, touring holidays. This is always worldwide outbound travel, international travel, we could call it. Air transportation, short trips, para and luxury accommodation. Para is meaning this uh, bottom end uh, accommodation. Mice nice travel, meetings, incentive, convention, events. Internet bookings and travel social media use. By the way, we have experience uh, concerning travel, uh, social media. If you ask the people uh, if they have used social media, you, you, the answer is you have only two, five, six percent of, um, of the people are answering yes. But when it comes to the content, what is going on on social media, then you, uh, you see that uh, there's a high uh, usership. So let's come to the future. Some words, short words about uh, uh, short and long-term future. Despite turmoil and ongoing crisis, and the world tourism will, growth will continue. Growth in the developed world will mainly come from more trips per inhabitant. That's meaning they make a second or third trip, and usually in the in, in the developed markets, uh, a traveler who is traveling abroad, uh, usually he makes five trips per year. Let's say he has a high travel frequency. In some countries like Scandinavia, it's even, uh, they make even 12 trips per year. So there is growth potential. Also, already the greatest part of the population is traveling. 
uh, but the growth will be modest and volatile uh, related to the economic development. And the contrary we will see in the, in the emerging markets where we have what we call a high uh, income elasticity, which is meaning if the income is increasing by 1%, uh, the trip volume is going up by 2 or 3%. Let's say growth two or three times faster than income growth. And that is where the main, main dynamics in the next 15 years will come from. So short term, how will travel year 2014 uh, fair. By the way, this is a picture from uh, Laurent Schwebel. He was a French uh, photographer and last year killed in Buenos Aires on the street. Uh, our world outbound travel uh, prognosis is based on uh, an own instrument which we have uh, developed. Every six months, our world travel monitor poses some prospective, let's say, looking forward questions concerning outbound travel planning. And we ask this question in Europe, in South America, in North America, and all over Asia. Let's say 90% of the world outbound market. <clears throat> and we, we calculate what we call IDK's World Travel Confidence Index. Very simple. If the index is uh, higher than 100, uh, we have experienced uh, that the market will grow, there will be increase. If it's below 100, uh, 100 uh, usually what has happened is the market was decreasing, and let's say around 100, uh, it is a growth threshold. So the World Confidence Index you can see here in my graph is from 2009 to 2014, and we see still the crisis impact which came after the uh, Lehman Brothers uh, crisis, uh, also travel market for the first time since ages, uh, market was a little bit going down. But since that, uh, it was always positive, and for 2014, we have even the highest uh, global uh, confidence value with 104. And there are big differences between the regions. For Asian outbound, we have an index 109. So maybe we can uh, expect uh, that Asia is uh, repeating plus 9% or plus 10% travel uh, in 2014. Also, South American uh, travel is uh, very positive, 106. In Europe, we can expect also 3% more trips, same counts for North America. So, all together, our forecast for next for 2014 will be plus 4 to plus 5%, making tourism again one of the most dynamic sectors of the world economy. Thank you very much. If you want, if you have further questions, now we will try to answer, you still have some questions, we will uh, try to answer these questions. And for the rest, uh, if there are other questions, uh, just uh, mail uh, to me and uh, I will uh, try to answer you immediately. Or you send a mail to ITB Academy to Jessica Varga and uh, also uh, Jessica will answer your questions. So, the so the, one of the questions was uh, the importance of social media integration in, in business uh, sector. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? And <clears throat> so uh, to our mind, uh, it will be very important to, to include social media into your business uh, strategy. Uh, but it's, uh, as I've mentioned, it's not just go, go on the internet and, and, and uh, send uh, some messages. Uh, but uh, look for targeted, up-to-date information, maybe or weekly. When you have new, real news, uh, place it uh, very fast. Um, we, we were not sure in the past about social media, but now we are seeing this has taken really high speed. And uh, social media is a thing, uh, a thing really to think about it. 
Another, another question was, outbound travel from Africa is becoming more and more popular. Do you envision that inbound travel to African countries will continue to grow as well? Uh, yes, we are sure that Africa is an upcoming uh, destination, uh, but it has to be related to the development policy. We need more accommodation, let's say more and better accommodation, just corresponding to the needs of the market, let's say, either on the, on the upper end or on the bottom end. So uh, these are uh, two points. Uh, by the way, I will be uh, in, in, in January, I will be in Namibia and South Africa, and we'll also have a look at how they manage sustainable tourism, where they seem to have developed quite uh, good models which can be copied by other areas of the world. More questions we have? So, so there are no more questions. So I, I thank you very much and just uh, send an email if you have questions, remarks, critics, whatever it is. I would be happy uh, to uh, work with you. Ah, how about um, just uh, Roy has just sent an, an email. How about the growth of volunteer tourism? It is an excellent segment. It, it's astonishing. Uh, uh, but it's highly motivating the people, so it is a good, uh, good segment. But it is small, it is not uh, the, the main market. More questions? No. So I thank you very much, and bye bye. <laughs> ah. Uh, there's, uh, Roy has another question, which are the sections of the world that participate in it? Uh, and of course it is, uh, voluntary is mainly, northern, uh, let's say the northern hemisphere in, in, in Europe and in, 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 Amer in the Americas. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>